everyone, welcome to Amanda's Book Corner. I'm Amanda, and this is my review of A Dress of Violet Taffeta by Tessa Arlen. This book is out today, and I'm so excited to share my review of it. I want to give special thanks to Berkeley, Austin Pros PR, and Laurel Ann Natris for providing me with an arc of this book. I really enjoyed reading it, and I'm so happy that the book is out now for everyone to read. A Dress of Violet Taffeta is about a real-life woman, a historical figure named Lucy Lady Duff Gordon, who I was not previously aware of before reading this book. But she's a really fascinating figure. The book starts off in 1893 when her husband has just abandoned her and she's going through a divorce and she has a young daughter to raise and she's not sure how she's going to keep herself afloat financially speaking. And what she ends up doing is she starts designing her own dresses and selling them to her friends, her peers, in an effort to make money and be able to keep paying rent and keep paying her one remaining servant. And from there, her business eventually grows into something so much bigger than she ever could have imagined. She ends up becoming acclaimed across London, across England, even among Americans, and beyond. This book spans about 20 years, from 1893 until 1912, and it follows her fascinating life. It follows Lucy starting her own business and really changing the way that women's fashion is in that time, around the turn of the 19th century. It also shows the role that she played in fashion shows as we know them today. She also is one of the survivors of the Titanic sinking in 1912, which was fascinating. We also get to spend some time with her sister, Eleanor Glynn, who was famous in her own right. She wrote romance novels that were pretty risque at the time, and she coined the term it girl. And so between the two of them, they're just really fascinating people. And it was so interesting to read about them in this book. In addition to them, we also get the perspective of Lucy's one remaining servant, whose name is Celia. She's actually inspired by two different people from real life. But Celia provides her own perspective throughout the book and we see kind of her view on things and how she helps grow the business and become the manager. And because she's working class, she also gives a different perspective on things which are really valued. Because this novel spans 20 years, it is kind of shown in snapshots as opposed to a detailed encompassment of everything that happened in that time. And so we get to see different moments that were really important in Lucy's and Celia's lives. Early on, it's about how she developed the business and how she started making connections and basically networking and doing sales among her peers. We also see the financial ups and downs and how Lucy's uncomfortable with money and Celia is a little bit more comfortable talking about it. They have issues with rent and they have issues with heating. Lucy becomes ill at one point. There's also a love story with this other guy named Cosmo. We get to watch as Lucy's daughter grows up. There's just so many different things that happen and it gives it kind of a sweeping view and just different snapshots that that together create a fuller picture of her extraordinary life, at least during these 20 years that we see. One thing I really liked about this book is how it shows women who are really pushing the boundaries and pushing beyond the constraints that women had at that time. Remember, it starts in the 1890s, and this is still in the Victorian era, and women, especially of a certain class, upper class, even middle class, they weren't really expected to work, and so, for example, Lucy's mother is very scandalized by her, by her going into trade and selling things. She thinks it's beneath them and is kind of demoralizing. We also see how Lucy and her sister Eleanor are really pushing the boundaries in terms of what they're putting out there as well. Eleanor likes writing risque novels, romance novels. Lucy isn't afraid to change undergarments as they were up to that point. She played a role in changing the corset and what people wore and the kinds of undergarments and, and not everyone was for that. I think a lot of people were, but then there are some people like Celia who maybe had more reservations about that. I really love that the story is about these two inspiring women who are going out there and changing the course of their own lives, making money for themselves, pushing against what maybe their mother thought they should be doing, what society thought women should be doing overall, and changing what women wore and what they consumed in, in entertainment. It's just really interesting. Another element that I liked personally was the perspective on working class people and poorer people. And this largely comes from Celia and her point of view in the different chapters. Celia talks frankly about money, much more so than Lucy does. And I like how she brings up different things from her own past. She was an orphan and she had to work since she was very young. There's also a situation involving one of the working girls who is doing something that she shouldn't be doing within the business and the kind of role that she's playing in her own family and why she's making those decisions. There's also some discussion of the Titanic crew members and how after the Titanic sank, they were not paid, which is 
devastating for someone of their class. I myself come from a poor and working class background and so I really valued seeing her perspective and her perspective on working class people in the late 1800s, early 1900s. I thought that was really interesting and a good balance to the book because a lot of the rest of the book really is about upper class women who are buying these gowns. I love the relationship between Lucy and her sister. They're very close and although they don't always agree on everything and they're very different in certain ways, I really like that they support each other and they help lift each other up and help each other develop their own careers. I also like their kind of fraught relationship with their mother. They really don't see eye to eye with her. her their mother is a difficult woman in some ways, very stuck in her ways and very judgmental. And I like seeing that although they often butted heads with each other, their mother was still important to them and was still very present in their lives. And then of course there's Lucy's daughter Esme, who I just thought was a wonderful character. She was so fun as a child, but it was also fun to watch her grow up. Cosmo was another great character, and I like that he was so supportive of Lucy. I like that he wasn't the kind of guy that was emasculated by her. He didn't expect her to stop her business when they pursued a relationship with each other. And so I thought he was a really great love interest for her. And of course, these are inspired by real people and they were a real couple, but I just thought that in the book, the way he's characterized is really great. And I will say that I'm, I'm not a fashionable person at all. I just, I don't really know much about fashion, but I really enjoyed getting to read about it and read about how Lucy developed these different dresses and her eye for color and lines and different materials that she worked with. The author does a wonderful job of describing how these dresses look and I could really visualize them. And if I could go back in time and buy some of her dresses, I think I would love to do that. If I had a dress of Violet Taffeta of my own, I would have worn it, but alas, I don't have any purple dresses of any color. So that's an oversight on my part. I will definitely have to change that at some point. Overall, I thought A Dress of Violet Taffeta was a wonderful and empowering and impactful novel. I really liked getting to know these different real people and the real mark they left on the world. And although I didn't know anything about them, I was instantly enthralled in this story and I just really enjoyed the whole thing. I give this book four stars and it's out today so I definitely recommend you go out and get it because it was a really wonderful read and I think you'll really enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this book review video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. And to make sure you don't miss any more of my videos, please ring the bell to get all my notifications. I put out about one or two videos every week, including book reviews, listicles, wrap-ups, and more. So thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!